Today we're at Andrews Forestry and Wildlife Laboratory, a property of Mississippi State University. Parts of this property have been managed strictly for timber production, while other stands, like the one we're in today, have been managed for a balance of timber production and wildlife habitat. The stand in the top photo was thinned to a basal area of 40 square feet per acre in 2014 and has since grown to about 55 square feet per acre. After the thinning, we controlled the mid-story hardwoods with an herbicide application of Amazapir. We've since treated it with prescribed fire to increase the food and cover value for a diversity of wildlife species, including white-tailed deer. On the other hand, the stand in the bottom picture has been managed strictly for timber production. It has not been thinned in recent years and has a basal area of approximately 110 square feet per acre. Without herbicide application or prescribed fire, the canopy and mid-story are casting a lot of shade at ground level and preventing the understory or layer containing herbaceous vegetation that deer highly select from developing. I will be referring to the stand that has been thinned, sprayed, and burned as the wildlife priority stand and the stand that is being managed strictly for timber production as the timber only stand. Today we're going to run a fun yet informative test comparing the forage productivity and relative availability for white-tailed deer. I'll meander around these stands for 20 minutes as a deer might while it's foraging clipping off the young, tender, growing tips of forage species that deer select. After the 20 minutes are up, we'll go back to the lab where I'll sort and weigh these forages to look at the results. Let's get going. Now that all the clipping is done, we'll head back to the lab where I'll sort all of the forage by species and weigh the biomass by treatment. While I only clipped three more plant species in the wildlife priority stand, the biomass was over three times that of the timber only stand. Increased forage biomass allows deer to maximize their foraging efficiency. The more accessible high quality forage is, the quicker they can stuff their rumens and get back to hiding cover to evade predators. Although you may have noticed a lot of green on the ground in both stands, the timber only stand had high coverage of low preference forage species for white-tailed deer. This caused me to increase my search time and wander around a lot more as I look for high quality forage species. There are several key takeaways from this experiment. First, all plants are not created equal when it comes to deer forage. Although both stands had a lot of green on the ground, the wildlife priority stand had greater availability of high quality biomass. Second, careful planning can set up a property to be valuable for both timber production and wildlife including white-tailed deer cover and forage. The thinning, spraying, and burning in the wildlife priority stand are key disturbances that reduce canopy coverage, allow sunlight to the ground, and promote plant species with high food and cover value for a diversity of wildlife species. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to follow us on social media to stay up to date on deer research.